Soccer fans, welcome back for this edition of Studs Up World Cup Edition featuring myself, David Salazar, and my colleague, Edwin Molina. Thank you very much for coming back. Today, we're going to talk about the politics surrounding this World Cup. So last year, during the 2013 Confederations Cup, there were a lot of protests, a lot of rallies. It got very violent, and a lot of people are afraid that it's going to be even worse this time around. What do you think, Edwin? I don't know about worse. Something's got to give. There, as I understand, Brazil has about 100,000 uh, special forces, troops of sorts, uh, ready to pacify the situation should protests arise. I mean, the big crux of the problem is, is that the World Cup has gone over budget. Huh. And they were promised, the people were promised that the private sector would chip in the money to cover any overrun, which happens with these type of projects. But overrun only, is in inevitable. Right, but they only covered 15% of that, right? And that's the problem. It, it's, it's, you know, according to the Brazilian voter right now is angry because they want infrastructure. I mean, Brazil has horrible infrastructure. You can't get from city right. to city, which, which fans will see during the World Cup. Um, they, they want, obviously, health care. They want education. And they feel that this money should not be going to World Cup organizers or the sponsors or even the facilities because this money goes to some of the stadiums. Like, of course. The owners, some of the owners of the stadiums that are being renovated, you know, this, the money goes to them. You know, they own the stadium in, in such a large degree. And the crazy thing is that, you know, they prom originally promised, what, 16 stadiums? They, no, it, was, it wasn't 16. They promised 12 from Jump Street. Right, and they barely can finish those 12. One of them's not even going to have a proper ceiling. From what I understand, Brazil has a huge problem right now because Corinthian Arena which is where the opening ceremony in Croatia, Brazil, kick off the tournament. It's not completed yet. There's about, there's, there's a few thousand seats that haven't even been put up, yet. put up yet. They were doing a test run on that stadium recently, and, if I'm and, not mistaken, and they were still putting in the seats while the game was in progress. Right. Here's the other thing. We live in a very digital era, and you know it's very well known that telecommunications in Brazil is pretty bad. Some of these stadiums, as brand new as they are, they have no infrastructure. For, for sending Wi-Fi. If you're a reporter without Wi-Fi in the middle of the jungle, you're yeah. in trouble. Yeah, Manaus, <laughs> the Manaus, that's gonna be an interesting situation to look at. And Manaus, that's, they've been in a 180 day state of emergency because of flooding. Right. It, it, it's, it's in the middle of the jungle. There's no real team there. There's really no purpose for the stadium to be here. They promised 12 stadiums. Yeah. And eight was the minimum by FIFA rules. And they bit off more that they can chew. Now, how do you think this is gonna, what do you think the ramifications from this experience are gonna be for 2018 and 2022? I mean, right now, there's a lot of stories about the 2022 World Cup. In Qatar, we already, like this weekend, there was some news about a you know, $15 million bri in bribes to the vote. They might redo the vote again. What do you think this experience is, is gonna have for the future? Well, these next two upcoming World Cups, they're, well, maybe not Qatar, but at least, Russia, in theory, Russia and Qatar are already set. Now, Russia, they, they, there isn't going to be any protests in Russia. I think we've already learned that with Pussy Riot and all the other forms of protest in Russia. So there will be, what you've seen in Brazil, you're not going to see it in Russia. Putin ain't having it. <laughs> Same thing in Qatar. However, with Qatar, the way these, these tournaments are, the bidding process, the way they're, they're, they're processed, it's going to have to change. I mean, Qatar has no business having a World Cup in the summer in 100 degree, 120 plus degree weather in the desert. They promise air conditioned fields. Who, who gives air conditioned pitches? Like, it just, it's great, and I'm sure they have the money. But even then, it's still gonna be 90 degree weather while they're playing on those pitches. It's still not enough. But that's, you know, obviously we, we can keep going about the Qatar issue in a long run. One, one thing about Qatar, I will say they did their right. They cut back, they scale back from 12 arenas to eight. Right. Because they, they, they realize what happened with Brazil. So already Brazil is having an effect. I think Sochi and Brazil is having an effect on the bidding process, not just on FIFA, but also the Olympic Committee. Um, you know, Sao Paulo, they're hosting the, the, the summer games. They're in trouble. The IOC is not happy. It's just a complete mess. Well, and, what will be the legacy of this tournament? And is there a positive one? I'm hoping that worst case scenario, I'm hoping this doesn't happen. Some, you know, structural damage that, that'll hurt people at the stadium. Exactly. That's my worst fear. Um, I think the protests, it'll happen, but I think, it, and it'll be pacified and it will affect the tourists visiting the area. But, you know, you, that can be taken, unfortunately, care of with brute force. You know, our, our laws of protest don't apply down there. So yeah. for us, America is a little different. 
you might see tear gas, you're gonna see those stories. I think at the end of the day though, the media focus is gonna be on the parties, the games, the celebration of the World Cup. Is this gonna be a good thing for the sport? Hopefully in the sense of changing the bidding process, especially after what happened with Qatar, mm -hmm. with what's going on with the lack of preparation by Brazil. I, I, I hate saying it, but to a certain degree, you gotta think about maybe keeping this tournament to first world countries. It's a little elitist, elitist to say, yeah. but, but if you can't do it, which Brazil has infrastructure problems from before this, you might have to consider that you're only gonna be able to hold this tournament in certain countries. Well, World Cup is just a few days away, so we'll find out how this unfolds. Thank you very much for joining us on this episode of Studs Up World Cup Edition. To continue the conversation, please find us on Twitter, on Facebook, or on latinpost.com, and stay tuned for upcoming episodes. I'm David Salazar, this is my colleague Edwin Molina. Thank you very much.